All right, good morning. Uh, today, we'll be looking at the lecture number three. <clears throat> and today, we are going to look, look at the uh, modular arithmetic. Okay. And we're going to begin with a uh, number theory basic. And number one, we talk about uh, divisibility. In divisibility, we talk of an integer. We say that an integer A divides B, written A uh, slash B, if and only if there exists an integer C such that C multiplied by A is equals to B. Then primes, a natural number P greater than or equal to two, such that among all the numbers, one, two, to P, only one and P divides P, meaning is a prime numbers. Then we talk of a fundamental theory of arithmetic. An integer greater than one can be uniquely written up to the ordering of the factors as a product of prime number. Now, modular arithmetic just is a branch of arithmetic mathematics related with the mode functionality. Mode stands for modular, okay? Basically, modular arithmetic is related with a computation of mode of uh, expressions. Expressions may have digits and computational symbols of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or any other. Here, we will discuss briefly about all modular arithmetic operations. An introduction to modular maths. When we divide two integers, we have an equation that looks like the following. P divided by A equals to Q, the remainder R. A stands for div dividend. P is the divisor. Q is the quotient, and R is the remainder. Sometimes we are only interested in what the remainder is when we divide A by B. For these cases, there is an operator called the modula, modulo operator, abbreviated as what mod. Okay, using the same A, B, Q, and R as above, we would have A mod B equals to R. And we would say this as A modulo B, is equal to R, where B is referred to as the modulus. For example, we have 13 divided by five equals to two, remainder three. In other words, we could say 13 mod five equals to three, because three is the answer we get as a remainder after the division. Visualizing modules with a clause is a very easy way to actually have a, a clear understanding of how the module works. So observe what happens when we increment numbers by one and then divide them by three. Example, we have zero divided by three plus to zero remainder zero. One divided by three plus to zero remainder one. Two divided by three plus to zero remainder two. 3 divided by 3, we get 1, remainder 0. 4 divided by 3, we have 1, remainder 1. 5 divided by 3, we have 1, remainder 2. And 6 divided by 3, we have 2, remainder 0. All right. So from here, we see that the remainder starts at 0 and incre increases by 1 each time until the number reaches 1 less than the number we are divided by. After that, the sequence repeats. By noticing this, we can visualize the modulo operator by using a, a circle. We write zero 
at the top of a circle and continue clockwise writing integers one, two, up to the one less than the modules. For example, a clock with the 12 replaced by a, a zero would be the circle for a modulus of a 12. To find the results of a mod b, we can follow steps, these steps. Number one, we construct this clock for size BBB. Okay, don't worry about BBB. We are going to have clear understanding as we proceed. Number two, start at zero and move around the clock. A steps. Number three, wherever we land is our solution. If the number is positive, we step clockwise. And if it's negative, we step a counter clock. It's very important to understand this. Positive number takes clockwise direction, why negative number takes anti-clockwise eh, direction. Example one, we have eight mod four. With a modulus of four, we make a clock with the numbers zero, one, two, three. How do we arrive at zero, one, two, three? Because we are talking of four, okay? One, two, three, four, okay? Each time we have mod, we must always start from zero, okay? Zero, one, two, three, four. For instance, we have eight mod five, we are going to have zero, one, two, three, four, making what five uh, different uh, uh, circles, okay? So we start at zero and go through eight numbers, eight number because we are working off eight mod, okay? In a clockwise sequence because we don't have any negative number from on eight, okay? So in as a result of that, we have zero. Of course, zero is the starting point. We have one, two, three. When we get to three, we start again from zero, zero, one, two, three. When we get to three, we start again from zero until we get up to eight. We have at the end one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, sequences. Okay. So if we do that, we have zero here. One, two, Three, zero, one, two, three, zero. Okay, so we end up at zero. At the end, we end up at zero. So eight mod four equals to zero. I hope it's very clear to everyone. Example two, we have uh, seven mod two. Then we have seven mod two. We have seven mod two. So here we have two, okay? As our modulus. So we make a clock with number zero one in order to have two numbers, zero one for two, okay? So we start at zero and go through seven numbers, seven. Remember, we are talking of seven mod two. So seven numbers, we have zero, of course, the starting point, we have one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, okay? And one here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Remember, since we are starting at zero, we don't usually count zero here on the sequence, okay? So we have that as a zero and one. Just make zero and one sequence. We keep rotating zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, until you get up towards seven sequences. And wherever you land here, which is one, becomes our answer. So seven mod two equals to one. I hope it's very clear. All right. So we end up at one. So uh, here we have another example uh, having a negative uh, uh, value, okay, which is minus five. We have minus five mod three equals to what? Okay, remember this modulus, this time as what? Three. So we make it three uh, uh, numbers starting from zero, zero, one, two, okay? So we have zero, one, two here, okay? We start at zero and go through five numbers, five numbers. So the sequence will now will be 
since we are doing a counter clock, not clockwise. So we are now go around here, zero, two, one, okay? Remember, we are talking of five. So if we have zero, two, one, at the end, we are going to have also zero, two, one. So at the end of the day, one becomes our answer. So we end up at one. So minus five, more three is equals to one. I hope it's very clear. So next is a quotient a remainder theorem. It states that for any pair of integers, A and B, B is positive. There exist two unique integers, Q and R, such that A equals to B uh, multiplied by Q plus R, where zero is less than or equal to R is less than B. Example, if we, if A equals to 20, B equals to 6, then Q equals to 3, R equals to 2. So 20 equals to 6 multiplied by 3 plus 2. Modular addition, okay? So I get to look at modular addition now, how it works. So rule for modular addition is that A plus B mod M equals to A mod M plus B mod M mod M. Okay, remember the closing brackets here. All right, so example, we have 15 plus 17 mod seven. Okay, 15 becomes our A and 17 becomes our M. Okay, so in this case, we have, sorry, uh, 15 becomes our A and 17 becomes our B. And then M becomes our seven. So we have 15 mod seven, okay, plus 17 mod seven, mod seven, which is equals to 15 mod seven. Hmm? 15 mod 7, of course, we have um, we have uh, uh, have it as 1, okay? Because 7, uh, 15 divided by 7 is what? 2, 2, remainder 1, okay? We have it as 1. Then 17 mod 7, we have 17 divided by 7 is what? 3. Uh, 2, 2, remainder 3. We have 17 mod 7 as what? As 3, okay? Mod 7. So then we have one plus four, three equals to four mod seven. Four mod seven, of course, four is less than seven. And then we have four as well as the remainder. Okay, I hope it's very clear. So the same rule is to modular subtraction. So we don't require much modular subtraction, but it can also be done in the same way. So let's look at modular multiplication. So the rule for modular multiplication is A, multiply by b mod n equals to a mod m multiply by b mod m mod n. So example, we have 12 multiplied by 13 mod 5 is equals to 12 mod 5 multiply by 13 mod 5 uh, mod 5, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember this uh, percentage is also the same. It can be represented as what as mod or percent. So more and percent are the same here in these uh, settings, okay? So we have 12 mod 5 equals to 2. Why 13 mod 5 equals to 3? And then mod 5. 2 by 3 is equal to 6 mod 5. 6 divided by 5 is 1. What remainder was? 1. So 6 mod 5 equals to 1. I hope it's very, very clear. So we now have a modular division. The modular division is totally different from modular addition, subtraction, and multiplication. It also does not exist always. For instance, you have A divided by B mod N is not equal to A mod M divided by B mod N mod N. So this is calculated using the following formula. A divided by B mod M equals to A times inverse of B if exists mod M. Okay. Let's look at the modular multiplicative inverse. What is an inverse in the first place? Recall that a number multiplied by its inverse equals, okay, from basic arithmetic, we know that the inverse of a number A is one over A, since A multiplied by one over A equals to one. Example, the inverse of five is what? One over five. Because you see five times one over five, and then we still give you what? One. So all real numbers other than zero have an inverse. 
So multiplying a number by the inverse of a is equivalent to dividing by a. Example, we have 10 divided by five is the same as what 10 multiplied by one over five. Still a multiplicative inverse. So what is modular inverse? So giving two integers a and n, find the modular multiplicative inverse of a under modulo m. The modular multiplicative inverse is an integer x such that a x multiplied by not equivalent to a one mod m. No, the value of x should be in the range of one two to m minus one. That is the int range of integer module m. Note that x cannot be zero as a multiplied by zero mod m will never be one. So the multiplicative inverse of a module m exists if and only if a and m are relatively prime. That is if gc, if a greatest common divisor of a m equals to one. So that is gcd, gcd stands for greatest common divisor. So look, let's look, take for example now, we have an input a equals to three and m equals to 11. The output now will be, that is the multiplicative inverse will be what four, which is output. Let's see how it works. So since four multiply by three mod 11 equals to one, four is modulo inverse of three under 11. One might think 15 also as a valid output as 15 multiplied by three mod 11 is also one, but 15 is not in the range of one, two to 10, okay? Because we have, when we have module M here, we have 11 as well as the, the, the range, okay? So if we have here, for instance, we have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's not valid. So I hope you understand. So let look look at this again critically. Since four multiplied by three mod eleven equals to one, four is modular inverse of three under eleven. Okay. So one might think. Remember. This uh, <clears throat> four falls within one to what to uh, ten dot fifteen, of course, fifteen does not fall within the range of one to ten. That is why it is not valid. Okay. Let's take another example. We have a equals to one and m module is what seventeen. So the output is twelve. How does it work? Since then, multiply by 12 mod 17 equals to 1. 12 is modular inverse of 10 under 17. Why? Because 10 is what is within the range of what? In, within the range of what? 12. So just like we have on the other one here. So uh, if you say 11, 11 minus 1, we have 10. We have that is the range of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, in this example, too, now we have m as 17. So if we say 17 minus 1, we have range of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so now 10 is within the range of what 16. So 10 is the valid, uh, 12 is the output of the uh, the modulus. So I hope it's very clear. Let's take for example another example number three. We have input as five and m module is one, uh, seven m. All right. So we are looking at what the multiplicative inverse and the output is what is three. Okay. So how we got this output three? We need to actually test in order to get exactly what we are going to multiply with the a, which is five, and the mod of it, mod seven, will now give you equivalent to one, but it must be within the range of what? M minus one. 
So here we have our range M minus one, which is seven minus one, six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six within the range. Okay. So we have uh, three is module inverse of five under seven. So this five is of course, is under the range of what? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So five is within the range of six. So the very answer three is correct. So I hope it's very, very clear now. So let's look at the modular exp exponentiation. Finding A exponential B mod N is the modular exponentiation. There are two approaches for this. We have record C and the I treative. Let's take an example. We have A equals to five, B equals to two, N equals to seven. So five exponential two mod seven equals to 25 mod seven, which is equals to four. Five exponential two equals to five times five. That is five raised to the power two, which is 25. 25 mod seven is equals to what four. Next, given three numbers, X, Y, and P, compute X exponential Y mod P. That is just what we have just done. In P, we have X equals to two, Y equals to three, P equals to what? Five, the output is three, why? Two exponential three is equals to eight. That is two times two, four, four times two, eight. Eight mod five is equals to what? Three, why? Eight divided by five is y remainder what three. All right, next example we have input, x equals to two, y equals to five, p equals to 13. And the output is six, how? We have two exponential five mod 13 equals to two exponential five, of course, is 32. Mod 13 is going to give us six. Why? Because 32 divided by 13, we have two, two remainder uh, six. Okay. So, in conclusion, if we have A mod B and we increase A by a multiple of B, we'll end up in the same spot. That is A mod B equals to A plus K multiplied by B mod B for any integer K. For example, 3 mod 10 equals to 3, 13 mod 10 equals to 3, 23 mod 10 equals to 3, that's 2 mod 10 equals to 3. Thank you for listening.